started. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is Willard Sunderland. I'm head of the history department. It's a real pleasure to see you here. Uh, I want to take a couple moments to, uh, before we get going, to thank uh, the principal forces that have come together to make this possible. Um, uh, that's, uh, in the first instance, uh, the Taft Research Center. Very grateful to the Taft for continuing to support our efforts to bring in interesting speakers. Uh, the history department. Uh, has also contributed, and so to uh, European studies. So my thanks to all of those institutions, and obviously to you for, for coming today. Um, I, I think you won't regret having having uh, having uh, turned your afternoon over to us. Um, um, today you're going to hear a, a wonderful speaker, uh, Professor uh, Leo Lukasen, who is currently Professor of Social History at Leiden University in the Netherlands, one of the most prestigious of Dutch universities, one of the great universities of Europe. Um, uh, Professor Lukasen is an extremely well-established authority in um, uh, the broad questions of European social history in the modern period. He's the author or editor of a, uh, of a uh, stomach-clutching 16 books, at least that's my casual count. Uh, 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 I, I might have missed undercounted by six or so, I'm not sure. Uh, in other words, extremely prolific scholar, also ranging around a whole variety of questions. But over the last period of his scholarship, uh, uh, since 2003, he devoted himself um, uh, very critically to uh, exploring the broad interconnecting questions associated with global migration history. And in that respect, he's really pushed himself to the front of a new field uh, as one of the most uh, authoritative commentators on the problem of migration in a broad comparative perspective. He's uh, best known for being uh, <coughs> a principal organizer sort of intellectual uh, engine behind uh, a series of conferences that have brought together scholars working on migration history. Uh, three have been held to date, uh, a fourth one's in the works. They bring together a range of scholars working in different eras, different um, uh, 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 culture areas of the world, and very importantly, different disciplines. It's a fundamentally interdisciplinary project. And it's out of that uh, commitment to trying to get to the bottom of uh, global migration history understood in the widest possible range that he's come today to speak on today's topic, which uh, focuses on the way in which migration relates to urbanization in the modern world. Uh, Professor Lucasen today will be speaking <coughs> on a lecture entitled, Another Great Divergence, Moving to the City, a Global Perspective. So please help me in welcoming Professor Lucasen. just a half a second. There is another event going on upstairs. So if you're mistakenly here for the senior thesis colloquium, <laughs> then you should head upstairs. I'm guessing most of you will want to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Okay. Thank you, Will, for this generous introduction. Um, the first time I gave a talk in the U.S. was, I think, in 1991 in San Francisco. It was at a conference. There were only two people in there. <laughs> one of them left after five minutes. <laughs> the other one was my wife. <laughs> you can imagine how glad I am. <laughs> so many showed up today. Um, uh, the talk of today is a very dangerous talk because I'm going to talk about things I do not know anything about. I'm a specialist in. Yeah, okay, let's say I'm a specialist. I'm a specialist in migration history of Europe in the last four centuries or so, a little bit. Also the Atlantic, so including North America. But the talk of today, as you've seen, includes the whole world and also includes urban history, which I'm also not really a specialist in. So you are warned. Um, uh, nevertheless, I, uh, uh, I will I have taken on this uh, this topic because um, of a let's say the request um, of colleagues from the U.S. from Philadelphia, uh, among others, to write a chapter for a forthcoming Oxford Handbook of Global Cities, and they asked me, "Well, Leo, couldn't you write a chapter on people moving to the cities and and uh, let's say the ensuing uh, integration process in the 19th and 20th century?" And I already said yes, and they said, "And for the whole world." <laughs> Work. Okay, but it had to be global. So not only Europe, not only the Americas, but also Asia, Africa, um, uh, well, what have you. So this is what I have to offer today: is my first, my preliminary analyses of, let's say, the differences that I see, uh, but also to to give you some, let's say, start of an explanation why um, 
let's say, the movement to cities, the urbanization process, but also what happens if migrants settle down, um, how to explain differences uh, in uh, both in time, but also especially geographically speaking. Um, and if you look at, let's say, the literature um, uh, on these kind of issues, one of the first things that stri are striking is that the urbanization process in Asia and in Africa um, at first sight offer a very different picture from, let's say, the Euro-Atlantic experience. And there are three things that are, that, that are strikingly different. One is that despite, let's say, um, the emergence and growth of mega cities like Lagos in Nigeria or uh, Calcutta uh, or Bombay or Mumbai, we should say, or Kolkata, that's of course more political correct uh, names of these cities nowadays, uh, that's what uh, you easily can get the impression that people in India or in Nigeria or Sub-Saharan Africa are all um, gathering together in these shanty towns and these big cities. Um, but this is not the case. If you look at uh, the level of urbanization, so this is the percentage of the population that live in cities, um, and then you see that it's, well, at the beginning of the 20th century you see that it's very low in Africa both in South Asia, which is mainly India, uh, East Asia is mainly China. Uh, and that's, you see that it uh, also, when, when we go through the 20th century, and at the turn of the, uh, with the 21st century, yes, East Asia, so China you see picking up. Yeah, we know it all from the newspapers, uh, that the, the big urbanization movement in China, peasants moving to these mega cities, and especially the eastern part of China. But you see that in Africa, but also India, uh, the people who are living in cities, it, it's, it's a minority. Only one in four Indians live in the city. Three and four still live in the countryside. So this is an interesting um, uh, uh, difference with uh, the developments we know in our own world, so North America and Europe. So that would be one. The second difference that um, very um, comes out strongly in the literature is that many of these migrants um, uh, in Asia and in Africa have a very strong attachment to their villages, very strong attachment to their homes, um, which often leads to circular migration. So yes, they go to the city, but also go back again. And often they want to die in these villages or to be buried, to, to be buried in these villages. So uh, and this is, of course, very different from our experience. I myself was born in a small village, uh, and I'll spare you the name because you've never heard about it. And uh, but. Uh, I'm sure I'm not going back, and I'm sure I'm not going to be buried there. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be found dead in this village. <laughs> anyway, so there's a very different kind of attitude than you see. So the third difference that you see in the literature is, well, it all pervades of significant, it seems, of ethnic loyalties and ethnic identifications um, in, within the city. Um, some people call it tribal, um, but I think that uh, ethnic and is a better term to describe what you see. So it means that migrants, both through formal and informal networks, very much rely on their co-ethnics. People come, coming from the same village, coming from the same region, speaking the same language. Um, uh, and this is the primary uh, uh, organizational form. Uh, also, again, I'm not sure how this is at the University of Cincinnati. People from Kentucky all go together. Or I mean, we, maybe we have the same phenomenon here, but my impression is that, let's say, in Europe and North America, people, in the end, um, um, have very different kind of net, built very different networks, and not primarily whether you're from Kentucky or from Missouri or wherever in the US. 